In the beginning, it was just guys. No women came along. It was a guy's camping trip. We drink a lot, we smoke a lot, we don't come home at night. In the year 2000, Bill's wife Michelle broke the gender barrier and joined in on the annual backpack trip. There were some things us guys had to get used to, but when you got a boot blister, you went to Dr. Mish. You got a back problem, Dr. Mish. She fit right in and women have been welcomed ever since. Hain. Hain is the Clark Kent of my life. Hain is the mild-mannered, easy-going, yeah, whatever, Mr. Photo Guy. Hain always had these two big cameras. Everybody's bitching about the weight of their food, and Hain has all of that plus these two cameras with him and lenses. And he's always telling us to stop, wait, we got to take a picture of that. This is why you come up here. After taking a dip in the 55 degree snow melt water, it's time for a day hike. And there's obviously no path here. You know what I mean? So, so, that's, so you're, you know, right, that's it right there, right? Yeah. It's just right between the bad gap. Today the plan is to hike up to Roy's Lake, which sits at 12,000 feet in hopes of catching trout. There's the pass to Royce Lake, that last little bit of snow there. Just took a long climb up, slow. Altitude's really affecting me. My head hurts. Can't really move very fast. Got to go a few feet and stop, and a few feet and stop. Balance isn't really good. Should be about 12,000 feet. I'm, a, I'm feeling every foot of it. This guy's already long ahead of me, probably already fishing by now. So I just gotta move across that and we'll see what's on the other side. The struggle to hike up to high elevations reminds me of another challenging expedition we took 19 years earlier. So the incredible story of 
God, Infinity, and the Slick Sneakers. First of all, I remember the first year we were out there, and I said, everybody, let's go to the top of that mountain. We can make it. And everybody went, no way. No way, I'm not going up there, no way. And I worked on you guys all year long for the next year. And I think I had you convinced. So a day or two after we got there and we were feeling Randy, we decided we we're, we we're gonna climb up to Banner Peak. And we went out there and we left. It was almost dark in the morning. It was like a 12 hour, you know, tent to tent extravaganza. Mr. Cavalier, yours truly, uh, decided that he didn't need any hiking boots and that this trip was coming right up and he had this whole pair of sneakers that his dad had given him. And uh, they were slick bottom tennis shoes and I said, I'd wear these all over the hell, all over the place and this would be fine, so I'll just wear these. Not boots, tennis shoes. And not good tennis shoes, mind you, but tennis shoes that had like 50,000 miles on them. <laughs> they were totally slick at the bottom. No problem, I hiked all the way up that river trail all the way to Thousand Island Lakes and there was no problems and uh, next day we decided we were going to climb Banner Peak 13,000 just shy of 13,000 feet and what the heck I'm going 20 years pulling up my bootstraps 20 years of gold in them hills I always found a reason to come back I thought I Walking up the glacier was the way to get up to the base of the rocks that would take you to the summit. And we started hiking up those, that glacier, and it just had those big knobs in it. I was doing okay in those slick sneakers, and I realized how slick those sneakers were getting. And I remember going up the glacier, and Bill had these lame, you know, Nike flats on. It was steep and it went right to that glacier lake, Catherine Lake, and I got about in the middle of that thing and we were climbing up the side kind of as I remember, but then we were traversing it. And that traverse, about the middle of that traverse, if you can imagine. So we start walking up that, that snow field because the topography on either side was so harsh that it would be really hard to get up. And it would take some rock climbing skills. So we're about halfway through that. <laughs> we're about halfway through that, through that uh, snow field, and Bill starts to kind of whimper and cry. <laughs> He's like, ah, 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 ah. All I know is I got out in the middle of that glacier, and I start to feel my feet slipping on that thing, and all of a sudden I just feel like I was losing control, and I just looked down there, and I saw infinity. God, vertigo, the whole works. It was right there, right in front of me. The whole thing, just right down to that frigid lake. And I just, <laughs> God. You know that sound he makes when he wakes up? <laughs> ah! 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 <laughs> it was like that, but with a, a tinge of panic. <laughs> I just, I tried not to picture myself on my ass flying down that thing, but it was coming. <laughs> First point, we finally noticed what Bill's wearing on his feet. It's like a pair of tennis shoes. <laughs> and I was just like frozen in the spot and I couldn't move my feet. They were, they were, they were expertly made for sliding down snow. <laughs> I was like on a little flat part. They kicked some you know, steps across that thing. I was in a spot and I was somewhat stable and Oh my lord, I just, I, I thought I was this close to exp expiration on planet Earth and I was going to go out in a big way. I guess the way to describe him was terrified. He was, he was fucking him. <laughs> he was scared. And I wasn't going across that anymore. There was no way I was going. I was camping right there. I think he did say, let's just camp here uh, on the, um, on the snowfield. I think he did say something like that at one point. <laughs>
<laughs> Death! Done! Frozen! Oh my god! <laughs> Just the thought of it, like all the way down there, it was, and it kind of, when I hit the vertigo, it kind of moved a little bit. I was looking down on the whole thing, and it's steep, you know, and that, that frigid lake at the bottom, and it's kind of like moving a little bit. I'm just like, oh my God, Mark. And Mark came, grabbed him. Mark Larrabee, he, 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 who was like kind of an, a little bit of an expert outdoorsman, uh, guided Bill to the side, and they climbed up the rocky edge, like it, on the, of the snow field, with him doing some hairy rock climbing moves. And this guy happened to be a really good rock climber. Dear Mark Larrabee, he had a straw hat like yours with a goddamn Cabo banner. He took me over to the edge. And I can remember him wanting to go into the crevasse between the rock and the glacier in the ice field. And he said, no, I'm not. I, I told him, you can't go in there. That's dangerous. Stuff's falling down in there. You can't go in. You got to go up the glacier. And I was holding his hand and we were walking up the ice field and we took about 20 steps and he went, no, I'm going in there. So he went in there and I said, okay, I'm going in there with you. And we climbed up that for a while until we got back on the snow field. But I remember thinking, oh my God, one of us is gonna die on this. And, and I was thinking the whole time, coming down is gonna be worse. And we hiked up the edge where the, where the um, rock met the glacier. We kind of shimmied our way up the side and that's where he felt more comfortable and I didn't at all. I was happy as a clam. I'm climbing up that thing. He's like, this is, this is, um, this is a class eight or some shit. He's saying this is harder than the glacier. But I'm going, this is easy, man. This is great. For me, I would have rather just braved the terrifying snow field. Um, cause, but he didn't want to slide down because it was like this slide down into the, into the frozen lake and die. But the, the alternative was to go up to this this rock climbing that was like, I mean, if you fell off that, you were just as dead. I mean, you know. I'll, I'll give him one thing for, in his first credit. Uh, he never considered going back. The, the logical choice never entered his mind. Hey, we should go back. And anyway, we climbed up the edge and uh, we made it up to the top of the glacier. And uh, those sneakers took me to the top of Banner Peak. And uh, that was the last time I wore slick sneakers on a, on a, on a camping trip. I'll tell you that. I got some rightful boots <laughs> after that. Well, I still tell people about that mountain climb and, and, and what it took to get up there. And that was Banner Peak? That was Banner about? Peak, 13,200 feet or something like that. I think it was 12, I think it was almost there. Or, almost 13? Yeah. Well, whatever. It's up there and we're camped at 10 and we have to climb up these massive scree fields and across big boulder fields and up a glacier and then up a, another thousand feet of dinner plate rocks that are sliding back down on you as you step on them. And I just remember the effort it took to get five guys to the top of that mountain. And, and you know, we way past our turnaround time. We gotta make it to the top at all costs. And you know, I remember just making it up there and sitting on top of this block of granite and it, looking straight down to the lake and man that was like majesty maybe would be the right word for how beautiful it is on top of uh, Banner Peak and I remember I said something to the group I said you're probably in the in the smallest percentage of people that come to this lake that would ever climb up here there's like probably less than one percent of the people that ever come to this lake that that that, that can make it to this lake, another 1% of those will get to the top of this mountain, and you guys just did that, man. And that, I've, I'm always proud of that as one of my best climbs, and I've been climbing since then, and I've been on top of a lot of peaks, and that was always one of my favorites because it was one of my first big mountains, and I did it with a bunch of guys that had no business being up there, including me. <laughs> and especially Bill with those shoes. And Bill with his flat tennis shoes. Yeah, that was a great memory. Did we learn a lesson? I think everybody had boots that next year.
When I finally got to Royce Lake, the first thing I did was break my fishing rod. Fishing pole broke. I was just trying to one hand it down and place it on something and snap. So I'm out of business. Oh well. It wasn't long before I see Phil Ireland appear on the other side of the lake. Because you made me a star once before. I'll do I it again. It. What Phil and I were discussing was the 1996 trip in Yosemite. We were playing in a pool of floating ice when I promised Phil slideshow stardom if he got in with the ice. He accepted the challenge and that photo with the subsequent exit photos did become a slideshow favorite. Although Phil Ireland isn't one of the original members, he might as well be. He took over Mark Larrabee's spot on the 1996 trip and has left an indelible mark ever since. Phil, who is known not to be afraid to jump into icy lakes naked, is quite the fisherman and led the charge in changing the menu from freeze-dried dinners to homemade cuisines. He also introduced, without any warning, the grilled steak. Phil Ireland. You have to really... And a block of ice. You have to really scope out your exit strategy. Right. Because you want to exit quickly. You know, I'm actually half tempted to do it because if it holds my weight, if it holds my weight, it holds my weight. If it doesn't, I drop through. And, uh, well, if the ice actually cracks, then I'll be able to get out of it and zip out of here. I'll document the whole thing. <laughs> Well, Phil never did go out on that ice, and there seemed to be no sign of any fish, so we just decided to take pictures of this stark and beautiful lake. We started to make our way back and gathered on the glacier. Now you get this crowd headed down a snow-covered incline and what do you think is going to happen? I don't have Teflon button. Since the beginning, we've always managed to have fun in the snow while coming down from a day hike above the tree line.
built this house. Down the mountain and back to camp we go, stopping at streams, meadows, and ponds along the way. Good day hike today? Oh yeah. It was a good hike, beautiful lake. Altitude was uh, hard on everybody, I think. David, but, uh, good day hike? Yeah. As day hikes day go? Hike. Yeah, except for there was no fish up there, otherwise None. it was awesome. The scenery, the crags, the lakes were incredible. Not, uh, I think we missed the bite, so we didn't do too well with the fish. But we had a great time, uh, we had a great hike, and, uh, and everybody survived. Uh, Kim may have some uh, butt bone issues sliding into the rock. What do we got there, David? Well, it's Tuesday night, so this is yeah, where's Shepherd Pie. Bye, Bye. After a full day of adventure and a hearty shepherd's pie meal, it wasn't long after the moon and stars came out before everyone slipped off to their tents. 